but athletes do dumbass things if it improves their performance. At the 1972 Summer Olympics, a 17-year-old gymnast stood on top of the high bar, jumped up, did a backflip, and then grabbed the bar while continuing into a swing. A few years later, this technique would then be banned from competition. Now, to truly understand why this was banned, we need to quickly understand the evolution of the event. You see, if we look at the distance between the bars in 1972, you can see that they're fairly close together and gymnasts could really easily transition from one to the other with little difficulty. But before this, routines of the early 1950s consisted of these little simple circles, kips, and balance holds, and they had more of a artistic ballet nature to them. Then in the late 1950s, the routine started to become a little bit more complex. They started adding in beats where the athlete would hold onto the top bar and bounce their body off of the low bar. And they added in wraps where they would wrap their body around the low bar while hanging from the high bar. And also release moves began coming into play around this time. Then in the late 1960s and early 1970s, companies began manufacturing uneven bars as specific separate apparatuses. Basically, they changed the design of these bars to allow them to be adjustable and they held them in place now with these tension cables that you can see in the video. And so as a result of this change, the coaches could set the bars further and further apart and that allowed the athletes to start introducing more advanced tricks. So if we go back to the 1972 Munich Olympics, that 17-year-old we were talking about is Soviet gymnast Olga Korbut. And in this video, she can be seen doing beats and wraps as she does her transition between the low and high bars. But at one point, she stands up on top of the high bar, jumps, does a backflip, and then grabs the bar while continuing into swing. And then if we look at the end of the video, you can see that she again puts her feet up on the top bar as she uses her legs to push off the bar over the low bar as she does a back layout landing for her dismount. Now, this was a more acrobatic style of gymnastics and it was revolutionary at the time. And it's kind of similar to what we saw with the Fosbury flop and the high jump, where it was this new technique and it was unveiled at a highly watched international event, the Olympics. And so all of a sudden it started getting a lot of media attention and attention from athletes worldwide. All of a sudden you started seeing other athletes begin to include this in the routine. And you started to see variations and modifications to it, like Yelena Mushkina, who added a twist to it in 1977, and others. So the Corbett flip, or the dead loop, it marked this shift away from the traditional, more balladic routines, and it set the stage for the dynamic, acrobatic routines that are seen in modern gymnastics. And so, by the mid-1980s, the distance between the bars continued to get set further and further in part. The circumference of the bars themselves also decreased, which allowed the gymnasts to grasp and swing between them with greater ease. And so the routines themselves started to focus more on swing. Nowadays, there is a required distance between the low and the high bar, which is called the FIG setting. And so all elite athletes have to use the specific setting. So why was it banned? Well. There's some obvious dangers here, right? If the gymnast fails to grab the bar, then they're in a bad position that could easily lead to a head, neck, or spinal injury. But that's only part of it. You see, the sport was evolving. As the bars were set further and further apart, the routines themselves began to focus more on swings, transitions, and releases. And each routine is judged by the code of points. And the code of points in gymnastics serves as a rule book for the sports, outlining guidelines for scorings. And it's established by the International Gymnastics Federation, or the FIG, and other local governing bodies. And so over time, as gymnastics evolved and more moves were introduced, the code of points adapted. And so what happened was in 1993, the Women's Technical Committee, or the WTC, they wanted the event to become a completely swing-based event. And so therefore, they removed all value elements in the code that started with the feet. Meaning, the athletes wouldn't get any points for performing this technique because they used their feet, and so it essentially removed it from competition. So now I want to hear from you. Do you think the Corbett flip should be allowed? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I have a whole series on band techniques you can go check out. Thanks for watching.